And we're going back to our top story now. Those protests against the French government's proposed pension reforms that took place yesterday. Over a million people took part in the mobilization with strikes and protests on the streets. Our press reviewer, Leo McGuinn, is joining us now to look at some of the media reaction. Leo, how are, is the French press reacting to yesterday's second day of strikes? News that's been dominating this morning, uh, those strikes in France, those strikes and protests on the streets of France. Yesterday, over one million, you say, according to the unions, they say 2.8 million. I'll show you the front of l'Humanité this morning to show you the scale of the protests. That's in Paris alone. They say over 500,000 people took to the streets of the capital. A figure that's disputed. Authorities say it was only 87 thousand their headline retrait non negotiable saying they're non negotiable that's a play on what elizabeth bourne said the prime minister she said that these reforms were non negotiable they were not up for debate they argue that the scale of the protests say that they are indeed up for debate Libération has something very similar. They've also got that play on words, pat négociable. And again, you can see the force of the people out on the streets yesterday. The fact also is that opinion polls show that nearly two thirds of people are against these reforms. And given the reforms unpopularity, Leo, what chance does this latest wave of protest have of swaying the government? What do the papers think? Well, according to most, according to the papers this morning, it's done very little to sway the government and to sway uh, Emmanuel and Macron's opinion on these reforms. This is from Aujourd'hui en France. They say, for the executive, it doesn't change a thing. They say this new day, day of strikes and protests will do nothing to deter the government uh, to, and they will push forward with these pension reforms, which, of course, will see retirement age move from 62 to 64. A similar line to Le Figaro, France's oldest paper. No picture on the front of Le Figaro this morning. They say that this is going to last for a long time. Neither side is going to back down any time soon. And I'll also show you l'opinion. Who is going to crack first? Qui va craquer? They also talk about uh, the union saying that they've announced two more days of strikes on the 7th and 11th of February. But the big question, who is going to give in first? going to be a long, a long couple of months ahead for us, Leo. We're going to move to the Middle East now, uh, where there's a new report that shines a light on the amount of executions increasing in Saudi Arabia. What's this about? Yes, as you can see here in The Times, executions have soared under Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman ever since he became Crown Prince in 2017. Uh, they say that executions have almost doubled since then. It comes from a report by a non-profit organization called European Saudis Organization for Human Rights. They say the annual amount of executions has jumped from 70.8 to 129.5 annually. As well as that, according to this report, they say that there's been at least 15 minors uh, executed, which, of course, is against the law. Uh, the de death penalty is not applicable to those under the age of 18. Despite that, 15 minors have been executed in that time. This is all paired with a report from BBC. They've talked to families of those executed families, relatives. They say they've not been given, they don't, they aren't given any advance warning when their loved ones are going to be killed. They say they've got no body to bury, no grave to visit, and many only found out about their deaths on social media. Another relative, one of those ex executed, said that his brother was condemned to death without any evidence or chance to defend himself. This is coupled with many prisoners being routinely tortured in their cells, according to that report. All of this is despite the fact that Mohammed bin Salman said himself in an interview five years ago they want to execute less people. His country was trying to minimise the use of the death penalty. According to this new report, it's simply not the case. And Leo, we're going to stay in the Middle East, but move over to Iran, where there's been condemnation of, for more news of people being imprisoned. Yeah, this is the story of Astia Hayigi and her fiancé, Amir Mohammed Ahmad. They're both in their early 20s. As you can see here in this piece by The Guardian, they've been condemned. They've been uh, sentenced to 10 years in jail. All this was for dancing in a video they posted on social media. Hayigi was not wearing her headscarf in the video, which, of course, is against Iran's strict 
rules. There are also, women are not also allowed to dance in public, even worse if it's dancing with a man. I want to show you the video, if I can, posted on Twitter here. Let's see if we can play a few seconds of it. This is them dancing slowly, romantically in Tehran. It's actually in front of the famous Azadi Tower. And because of that, they have been condemned to 10 years in jail. Their families say they've also been denied any legal aid or den and denied bail. All of this comes, of course, against uh, a backdrop of massive protests in the country after the death of Marsa Amini in September for not wearing her veil correctly. And since then, there's been 14,000, over 14,000 people detained in the country. All right, finally, Leo, we're going to switch gears completely now. A new Barbie doll is being released, all in the name of inclusivity. Tell us more about her. Yeah, I don't know about you, Alison, but I had two older sisters growing up. So I was forced to play with Barbies all throughout my childhood. Secretly, I quite enjoyed it, really. And now there will be a brand new Barbie doll. As we see in The Independent, Barbie are going to release their first ever doll with scoliosis. It's actually Chelsea, who is Barbie's sister. Mattel, the creator of Barbie, say they're releasing this in the name of inclusivity. It will come complete with a curved spine and a removable back brace. It's all in the name of representation, encouraging children to to celebrate inclusivity. The company worked very closely with neurosurgeons and scientists and experts to make sure they got it right. It's another doll in their more ex inclusive range. They've already released one with a hearing aid, one with a prosthetic limb, and one in a wheelchair. And this is just one more to add to the list. Mm, well, Chelsea is very cute. I guess we can welcome her to the Barbie family. Uh, Leo, uh, thank you very much for that look through today's papers. That's France 24's Leo McGuinn.